Hi, my name is Gordon Parker. I'm from Michigan Tech University and today's video is covering some extra topics in state space realization of dynamic systems. So let's look at a particular example that we haven't covered yet and what I'm going to do is, is set up a, a, a third order differential equation that has some interesting features in the input. Now in some previous videos we looked at what a state space representation is and why we typically do this sort of thing and also another video um, that went into the details of how you create a state space realization from a dynamic system or system of differential equations but in this video, we're going to look at a particular interesting differential equation, this one, um, that has on the right-hand side the input p, but also its time derivative p dot. So let's say that for this differential equation, our output is w, and the input u is just p, which is a function of time. So p, t, p of t could be a sine wave, uh, exponential, etc. Now, if we just have at it and start trying to do a state space representation, we might want to do something like this. x1 is equal to w, x2 is w dot, x3 is w double dot. Three states. We have three states because this is a third order differential equation. Um, and so now we start trying to finish off the state space realization keeping in mind that what we're after are the A and B matrices for this first order representation of the system and the C and D matrices for the output equation. So since we're going after this state equation and the, the x dot equation, the top red equation. We would just go ahead and take the time derivative of each of these states and then try to represent the right hand side in terms of x's and u's. So x1 dot is equal to w dot and that's x2. That's wonderful. And x2 dot is w double dot and that's x3. Still everything is good. And now x3 dot is w triple dot. Well, we can go up to our original differential equation and start filling that in. So we have negative 3w double dot. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Negative 5w dot minus 7w plus p dot plus 13p. So far, so good. Now let's replace the w's and the p's with x's and u's. We get negative 3x3 minus 5x2 minus 7x1 plus, well, what to do with that? We can certainly write uh, plus 3u for the p, but we have no p dot in our u. Now, it might be tempting to create another u, right, because it's a multiple input, multiple output system. So why not do u1 equal p and u2 equal p dot? Well. That's not quite so good because p and p dot are actually related. So this is not a very good way to represent this uh, differential equation in state variable form. So let me draw a line here and I will introduce a different way to do it. We'll go x1 is equal to w, x2 is w dot, but now x3 what we want to do is looking at the original differential equation we want to come up with something that looks like w dot such that when we differentiate it we can annihilate those two terms or at least the p dot. So let's define x3 as being w double dot minus p. And the reason I did minus p is because I know that when I differentiate this x3 dot, so I'm thinking ahead a little bit, I'll have w triple dot minus p dot. So that means I can take this 
bring it over to the left hand side and put everything here onto the right hand side. Well, why don't I just do it? So w triple dot minus p dot is equal to negative 3 w double dot minus 5 w dot minus 7 w plus 13 p. Let me go work my way up. x2 dot is w double dot and that's equal to x3 plus p using this equation. And x1 dot is equal to w dot and that's equal to x2. I'm going to switch colors just to make it a little bit easier to see. So um, uh, this one is really done. That is the right hand side is represented in terms of x. This one um, I just need to do one little thing to it. Um, P is really my input U. So just to use that nice notation, I'll write it like so. And finally, this one we have to fiddle with a bit. So negative 3, W double dot is equal to X3 plus P, which is really U. Minus 5 W dot, which is X2, minus 7 w which is x1 plus 13 p and I can simplify this just a little bit oops instead of writing this as p let's write this as u there we go so minus x3 minus 5x2 minus 7x1 I can combine the negative 3u and the 13u and get a plus 10u I'm essentially done at this point. I just need to organize all this information in red into a state variable form. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll switch to blue. So x dot is equal to, I'll hog out some space for my A matrix times x plus I'll hog out some space for my B vector. It's really not a matrix. And then I'll just fill this in using the equations from the previous page. So let's see, the x1 dot was equal to x2, and there was no u dependency, so I get that. My x2 dot was equal to x3 plus u, so I get a 0, a 0, a 1, and a 1 there. And my last equation was negative um, 7x1 minus 5x2 minus 3x3, and there was a 10u in that one. So there's my state equation. Let's create the output equation, just a single output. So I'll hog out some space for my C and my D matrices. The, um, the output was W, and W was the first state x1, so I just get 1, 0, 0, 0. Done. I have my A, my B, C, and D. Now, the original differential equation looks like this. And let's just have a little bit of fun with this system before we call it complete. More specifically, let's see what we can do to check our state space realization against our differential equation. Uh, so for those of you who have had some background in uh, transfer functions and Laplace transforms, we can take this equation and quickly create a transfer function. A transfer function is an output variable. In the Laplace domain, we typically use capital letters, so capital W over capital P, uh, my input. And so this will be S plus 13 over S cubed plus 3S squared plus 5S plus 7. So here I have a state space realization, and here I have a transfer function. So now let's take these two things and play around with them a bit in MATLAB. 
Okay, so here's our MATLAB window. Um, now, I could put both of these into Simulink and compare them that way, but I'm going to try to stay just within MATLAB to do this uh, comparison. So what I'll do is I'll first put in the state space realization. So here's, here goes my uh, A matrix. And I'll do my B matrix. And my C matrix. And my D matrix. And let's go ahead and, and put in our transfer function too. So I'll give it the numerator 1 and 13 and the denominator is uh, 1, 3, 5, and 7. There's many things I can do with this. Um, let's go ahead and first just look at the roots of the denominator. So these would be the, the poles of this transfer function or the, uh, the roots of its characteristic equation. There they are. Those should be identical to the eigenvalues of A. And let's see if I can stretch this out just a wee bit more so we can see all of this at once. And sure enough, the roots of my denominator of the transfer function are identical to the eigenvalues of the A matrix. So that gives me a pretty good indication that at least my A matrix is correct. Um, let's use a couple other MATLAB um, features to create a, a state space uh, object and a transfer function object. So to, let's do the transfer function object first. I'll call it my tf, and we'll use the tf command in MATLAB, and look what it created. It creates a transfer function that actually kind of looks like the transfer function that I wrote down on the previous slide. If you use the get command in MATLAB, which is sort of an all-purpose command to look at uh, properties of different types of objects, we'll say get my tf, and it tells us all the different um, uh, fields associated with it. Field isn't quite the right uh, term, but uh, maybe method. So we can see that it has the numerator and denominator in there. If I wanted to access that back, I could say my tf dot num. Well, it, it isn't showing us the whole thing, um, but it's there. So for instance, if I had a transfer function object and I wanted to find the uh, roots of its characteristic equation, I could, um, oh, I can't quite do that. I have to do this. Uh, so I'll go back one, and now I do it. Okay, so I had, to, I had to access the first element of the cell array for a denominator. That also tells me that I could probably have looked at my denominator like so. I could look at my um, numerator, which is what I was trying to do a couple uh, commands ago, like that, and I can get all that stuff back. Um, we could do the same thing for the state space realization. I could go my ss is equal to, I'll use the ss command um, for a, a, b, b, c, c, and d, d. And now I have this whole big um, uh, state space object. And I could access pieces of it. I could go myss.a and get out the A matrix um, uh, and really do all kinds of interesting things with it. If I look at get myss, you notice here I can actually name the states. So for instance, um, I can name the inputs, the outputs, I can give them units. Here's where I can uh, name the states. Let's just do that just for fun. Myss um, dot uh, what was it called? State name. Let's go back up there and just make sure. State name equals, we have to use cell arrays. Um, let's say w for x1, w dot for, or wd for w dot, wdd for w dot dot. And now when I look at get my ss, I will see that my state name has some stuff in it. And when I just say my ss here, now it actually labels my um, A matrix with the states. 
So it just gives me a little bit better way of, of understanding or relating what I see in the MATLAB window to what I maybe wrote down on a piece of paper. Um, but that was a little bit of a, of a sidetrack. Uh, we now have a MySS, we have a my um, transfer function, and so now let's, let's compare them. Um, one way we could do that is to create step responses for these two um, items, the myTF and the mySS. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll make a time array from zero to point uh, at a thousand hertz up to maybe five seconds. Then let's go to ten seconds. And now we'll use the step command in MATLAB. So I will create an output called y SS. So this will be for our state space system. So YSS equals step um, my SS, and I have to give it that time vector as an argument. And so it just generated a step response and stored it in YSS. YTF is similarly like so. And now I could plot TYSS, T, T, YTF. Look at that. I get a step response that um, looks like a single trace, but there's actually two there. They're just identical. So um, there's essentially no error between those two step responses. So I guess from that we can conclude that uh, those two, the, the state space realization is uh, correct related to that transfer function. It's just a quick uh, sanity check. I'll show you just one other little trick you can do. If you create the state space realization, like we did, right? we have our mySS, we have an A, a B, and a C, and a D matrix, we can use a MATLAB command called um, SS to TF that can convert or extract from that state space realization a transfer function. So let's do that. I'm going to create um, my num and my den is equal to ss to tf um, a a b b c c d d and I have to give it an argument uh, an integer argument at the end that tells MATLAB which input I want it to find transfer functions with respect to. Now because this system has just one input p or u um, when I tell it one it's just going to give me one transfer function and there it is. It's kind of um, squirreled away. We've got my num and my den sitting there. But if we look at my num, I'll look at it this way and this way, and I'll scroll up just a wee bit, we can see that my numerator is exactly what I had um, in the my tf. And my den is exactly what I had in my TF. Another way to do this is I could say my TF2 is equal to TF my num and my den. I'm just creating another transfer function. There's my TF2 and there is my TF. They're identical. So another quick sanity check uh, between the state space realization and the transfer function and a way to extract a transfer function from a state space realization in MATLAB. So what did we do? Well, we just looked at a very uh, particular differential equation that had derivatives of the input on the right hand side, looked at a way to, in a sneaky way, create a, trans a state space realization of that, and then explored a little bit in MATLAB how we can verify that our state space realization is correct and um, also found a way to extract a transfer function from a state space realization. So again my name is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech and thanks for watching.